Hello everybody, I'm Samuli Kohonen, responsible about the Kana to sales. So I will tell you today about LiDAR de-icing and defogging and our transparent heaters based on the CNT technology. LiDARs and data systems are working nicely in California or southern France where it's perfect weather conditions and no ice, no significant fog. But when you are coming up north, like Finland, where we are having harsh weather, harsh winter, or you are going up to Canada, where temperature can drop pretty low, and there is a lot of an ice and snow, it's not any more so easy to keep your sensors clean. So it's super important that you are enabling also your customers' uh, safety in such places like in Finland or in Canada or in Southern Asia where humidity is super high. So you have to keep your LiDAR lenses clean of the fog, ice and snow all the time. And we have solution for that. Kanatu is a carbon nanomaterial developer and we create the most advanced carbon nanotubes for industry. We are operating in two different areas, automotive and semiconductor. Today I will concentrate on LiDAR de-icing applications. People are often asking me that, hey Samuli, are you a mechanical company or are you an electrical company? Actually, we are a chemical company. Everything is based on our unique CNT material. Kanatu CNT is highly developed and offers consistent quality, reliability, performance for highly engineered solutions. We are collaborating with the world's most exciting companies to enable industry breakthroughs. Our shareholders are companies like Denso, Forcia and 3M who are leaders on their own area. We have been in mass production since 2015 and we have been delivering over 1 million sensors for our very first car model and field return rate is exactly zero what we are extremely proud. So zero field return rate over seven years and one million delivered units. We have been licensing our technology also to one of our partners for ADAS heaters already year 2018 on non-exclusive basis. So basically we have two different business models. Either we are manufacturing the CNT film and CNT based heaters in-house Kanatu or we are licensing our technology to our partners. As I said, we are operating in two different areas, semiconductors, where we are providing world's thinnest and strongest freestanding CNT membranes for demanding EUV applications. And then we are working in automotive area, which is our topic today. Here you can see our factory next to the Helsinki airport. We have been in this facility a couple of years now. And uh, as I said, we have been in mass production in automotive since 2015. And since 2021, we have been in mass production for semiconductor industry. You may ask why we are operating in Finland, but the reason is very simple. I mean, we want to keep our R&D and manufacturing close to each other so that we are continuously able to improve our material and our applications. In addition to that, our process is fully automated and it's based on roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing. So labor cost, or let me say labor share out of the BOM is minimal. In the same facility, we have uh, our R&D activities, manufacturing for automotive, as well as semiconductor clean room and fast turnaround prototyping 
This enables perfect customer service. Semiconductor and automotive are our key uh, focus areas. Automotive is roughly 50% of our revenue, semiconductor roughly 50% of our revenue. Healthcare is something what we are investigating at the moment and doing business development there. We are enabling autonomous driving in any weather with Kanatu CNT film heaters. On LiDAR area, uh, Kanatu transparent heaters for LiDARs provides clear field of view for LiDAR, ensuring accurate 3D mapping of the vehicle's surroundings. On camera area, we are providing wire-free windshield camera heaters with even and power efficient heating throughout the whole surface. And this is enabling accurate object detection without any kind of the optical distortion. What are the key benefits of our heaters for LiDAR applications? We are able to provide superior optical performance, even and power efficient heating, as well as design and integration flexibility. Let me talk first of all about the superior optical performance, what is key of uh, LiDAR heaters. So our CNT is providing record high transmittance at LiDAR wavelengths. It's totally metal free at the field of view, so you don't have any kind of the metallic wires in front of your sensor. Reflection is low and there is virtually no haze. In addition to that, we are able to provide high wavefront uniformity. What comes to the even and power efficient heating, we are able to provide heating without any kind of the thermal gradient. And this is of course eliminating all hot spots on on field of view. And in addition to that, we have been learning throughout the years that our heaters are consuming roughly 40% its less energy than traditional heaters. This comes day by day more important when OEMs are moving more to electrical cars and every kilometer and saved uh, power is counted. We are always, always building our sensors and heaters based on customer needs and we are modulating uh, properties of our heaters based on our customer specifications and requirements. Our heaters can be implemented on top of different substrates, typically PET or PC substrate. Those are 3D formable, so basically you can bend our sensors with a one millimeter radius or up to one millimeter radius and stretch those up to 200%. So basically we are able to provide also design freedom what comes to the heater element shape. Integration of our heaters is done either by film insert molding or via lamination. And film insert molding, of course, we are using polycarbonate substrate. We are back injection molding heaters inside of the plastic stack, just like IML products. Or you can laminate our heaters behind the glass stack by optically clear adhesive or sandwich our heaters inside of the glass stack, like on wind seals between the C and D layer, B and C layer. Okay, what goes behind creating the most advanced transparent heaters for LiDAR? Let me explain you what we have been doing throughout a couple of last years to further improve our technology. Most important thing is, of course, performance. We have been developing totally new Kana to CNT synthesis process, and we are able to provide 80% its better heating performance with very same optical performance than before. So this is, of course, wonderful, and we are able to enable 
faster heating combined with improved LiDAR performance. So super critical thing. Then we have been scaling up our manufacturing. So we have been building up totally new CNT reactor family or generation, which is providing roughly four times higher output compared to the previous generation. So this capacity enlarging is enabling us to meet the rapidly increasing LiDAR as well as uh, ADAS camera demand. Production is fully automated today at Kanatu and, and it's located in a clean room. So this is enabling, of course, high level process consistency and high precision of your LiDAR heaters. We are operating with different substrates, as I said, and then this is typically done on Covestro, uh, Macrolon PC, including the LiDAR specific variants or vari variety of different PETs from different industry leaders. Then if we are talking about the integration, as I said, uh, we are able to provide this design freedom due to the high uh, stretchability and bendability and our heaters can be integrated inside of the plast plastic lens or laminated or on glass uh, covers. Most important thing, as I said, is uh, Kana to CNT performance improvement. So this graphics is illustrating the improvement what we have been doing over the last couple of years. In summary, we are able to create same heating performance as before, but roughly 5% is better transmittance at 80 ohms per square heaters. So this is of course really significant improvement and uh, our customers are extremely happy about this. On this slide, I'm showing you difference between the traditional and then Kana to CNT film heaters. On right side, you can see traditional heating uh, element based on the wire heater. And then there is, of course, optical distortion always involved on those traditional wire heating solutions due to the fact that there is high temperature gradients. Also, power consumption, as I said, is higher than in film type of the heater and then field of view is blocked by those metal wires. And of course, those metal wires are creating extremely poor transmittance in, in wire turrets. Then if we are looking on left side, our film heater, you see that the heating area is even and uh, power, power efficient across the whole surface. There is no optics degrading temperature gradients and most of all, there is no any metallic objects in field of view. So we are able to provide high and uniform transmittance throughout the whole area. I would like to claim that we are having the most advanced transparent heater for lighters, and actually I'm sure about it. Let's go a bit more technical area now. I will explain how we are building up our heaters. So this, is illust this page illustrates typical uh, heater design. So we are building up our heaters on the PC or PET substrate. We are printing the silver electrodes around the field of view, and this hatched area is describing CNT. So whole area is now conductive, and you are able to heat this whole surface evenly and effective way. If so wished, we can implement also surface-mounted uh, surface uh, thermistor on, on our film, so this is like optional uh, feature. Then talking about the technical parameters, of course, this is just example. So as I said, utilizing different kind of the substrates, typical substrate thickness in case of the polycarbonates is uh, 
let me say, 125 to 250 micron. In certain special cases, we can use as thick as 375 micron substrates. PT thickness is around 100 micron and uh, varies in thinnest cases 75 and thickest 130 30 micron. Operating voltage typically range from 12 to 48 volts and we see now tendency that when OEMs are moving more and more towards the new electrical architecture, there is even 48 volts available for us, which is of course uh, further improving our heating performance. Seat resistances where we are modulating our heaters are varying from 30 to 200 OPS. Anyhow, let me say that typical values are somewhere between 60 to 130 ohms per square. And giving you a bit idea about transmittance, what we can provide in LiDAR applications. So on 905 nanometer LiDARs, typical transmittance is somewhere between 96 to 99 percent. It's, and then if we are talking about 1550 nanometer LiDAR, slightly higher going up to 99 percent. It's of course those values what I'm representing here are substrate normalized values. So our CNP layer is creating roughly one to four percent its transmittance loss on, on your uh, application. Haze level of one percent it's and then power densities varies typically from 700 watts per square meter up to 3.5 kilowatts per square, square meter. We can build up up to 600 times 600 millimeter heaters, but as you all know, typical ADAS heater is roughly, what I should say, 150 millimeter times uh, 30 millimeter. But of course, if there is need for bigger heaters, that can be done. And integration really by film insert molding or lamination. On the right side, you see illustration of our LiDAR heater and, and you see that this specific LiDAR heater is based on the polycarbonate substrate. On top of polycarbonate substrate, we are depositing our CNT material, which is once again highly conductive and highly transparent. We are printing the silver traces to create the electrodes and we are putting overcoat on top. On certain special cases, we are putting also certain kind of protective coating to protect the heater during the assembly and integration. Also optical anti-reflection coating or hard coating can be added on top of the whole package. And this heater package will be then either laminated or in mold it inside of the plastic stack. On this page, I'm showing you some, let me say, simplified power density calculations. So as I said, OEMs are moving from 12 volts to more 48 volts uh, solutions. And uh, this page is illustrating nicely what are the benefits what we are able to get out there. So if we say that, for example, e electrode distance is 50 millimeter uh, with 12 volts, we are able to create roughly 1.1 kilowatt per square meter power density, which is, let me say, enough for most of the applications and able to de-ice your sensors. If we are having 48 volts, it's input vo uh, power input, of course, then the power density is increasing significantly. We are able to create up to 18 kilowatts per square meter power density for this application where you have electrode distance 50 millimeter. So basically with this 18 kilowatts per square meter, you are exploding the ice away immediately. Those values what I'm representing here are based on 50 ohms per square CNT material, which is rather typical uh, 
application for us and our customers. If you are talking about the transmittance at uh, LiDAR wavelengths, if you are taking example of uh, 905 nanometer LiDAR, and we are taking 130 ohms per square heater, which is also rather typical, we are able to meet roughly 98% substrate normalized transmittance. If we are talking about uh, 1550 nanometer lidars, with 93 ohms per square heaters, we are able to meet 98% substrate uh, normalized transmittance. And these curves on left side are illustrating uh, correlation between seat resistance and transmittance. Talking about our sensor manufacturing process, so our sensor manufacturing process in simplified way goes so that we take the substrate, we are depositing the CNT material on top of the substrate, we are doing printing of the silver electrodes around the field of view. If needed, we are thermoforming sensor or heater by high pressure forming or in certain cases by thermoforming. And after that one, integration either by lamination on glass surface or inside of the glass stack or injection molding inside of the uh, plastic stack. Let's check a bit more this uh, design and in integration flexibility. On left side, you can see, can see polycarbonate lens. And as I said, on polycarbonate lenses, we are integrating our heater by film insert mode. And of course, this film can be 3D formed before the injection molding and uh, if so, whisked. So let's check the stack here. On left side, we have polycarbonate substrate. Once again, we are depositing our CNT on top. We are printing the silver electrodes there. We are putting the protective layer and overcoat there. And then we are performing uh, injection molding. On top of that one, optional AR or HR coating can be added. Then if we are talking about the glass integration, there is two different methods. Other one is on glass integration, what you see left side of the, uh, uh, or middle of the page, and on right side you can see in glass lamination between inner and outer glass. Let's check this on glass uh, application. Once again, you have a PC-based uh, heater here. We are putting on top of the on the other side of the heater, you have heat. Uh, 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 other side of the heater, you have uh, OCA. So structure goes so that Kanatu heater, polycarbonate, OCA, and then inner glass. So basically, you are attaching the heater by optically clear adhesive on the glass. In wind seal type of the solutions, we are typically integrating our heaters inside of the glass. So there, there you are having PET-based uh, heater. CNT is deposited on top of the uh, PET substrate. Once again, silver traces are printed there. And then you are sandwiching our heater between the PVB layers and integrating between the glass B and C surfaces. Extremely robust, reliable solution indeed. This picture illustrates uh, still the film insert moldings for certain customers. Film insert heaters are needed. Certain customers are preferring to on glass uh, integrated solutions. Certain customers are preferring in glass uh, integrated solutions. As you can see, on right side, you have the injection molding tool, you have heater, thermoformed heater inside of the cavity, and you are performing back injection molding there. On these applications, 
substrate is always polycarbonate based. You have the CNT layer on top, HDRN to protect the layer, and then in certain cases, AR coating. Talking about benefits, what we have compared to some other materials. So without going to details here, we all know that P dot is always slightly bluish, metal mesh based solutions, there is high haze, um, mesh is visible, silver nanowire based solutions, there is low stretchability, limited forming, and, and uh, reliability issues and super high haze. On ITO based solutions, basically no stretching, no overmolding, and due to the fact that it's a ceramic based uh, solution, there is high haze as well. Then if we are talking about the Kana to CNT, as I have been saying, we are able to provide 200% it stretch, one millimeter uh, uh, bending radius. Our material, you can in-mold it uh, with uh, high performing transparency. You can laminate it, no haze, no contracts, no reflection, and most of all, even heating without any kind of the picture distortion. So we truly believe that we are able to provide something totally unique and super beneficial for LiDAR applications. Our heaters are meeting the automotive industry standards. So no matter are we talking about the 85, 85, 2000 hour testing or whatsoever, uh, different requirements are from different OEMs, but we have been passing the most demanding criteria from environmental reliability perspective. Needless to say, uh, we are naturally uh, IATF certificates. We have ISO uh, 14001 certificates and then uh, all the needed quality systems on on place. Our material is extremely environmental friendly. We don't utilize any kind of the toxic materials. So this is really green technology what we have. And then last but not least, let me summarize still the benefits of our technology. So as I said, Kanatu CNT heaters are the most advanced heaters in market for LiDAR applications. Our solutions are aimed for harsh weather conditions. It doesn't matter are we talking about the cold weather up here in north or are we talking about the super humid uh, conditions in Southeast Asia. We are able to solve your ice as well as humidity problems in front of your sensor. We are able to provide record high transmittance and conductivity fast and most of all even and super power efficient heating across the whole field of view to enable safety of your customers. No wires at the field of view, no optical distortion. Our technology can be implemented either by film insert molding or lamination on top of different film substrates. You can thermoform or high pressure form our material into any 3D shape, up to one millimeter radius, what I said. We have been in mass production since year 2015. And once again, I would like to say that we are super proud that our first product throughout the seven years, we have been delivering over one million components. Field return rate is exactly zero. And last but not least, proven automotive trade reliability. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if you would like to learn more about our technology, please feel free to contact me or my colleagues and we are happy to provide you more information and discuss about your challenges and provide solutions for those ones. Thank you.